Well, joining us now on episode number three of Play by Play with Dan Dunleavy is Dave Reed. And for those that in Buffalo or Western New York that don't know a lot about Dave's background, there is a lot to it. First of all, thanks for joining us. But when you start getting into the color commentary side of things, the question I always have for former players, and I think it's a legitimate one, is what was that transition like to you when it came time to be honest about, hey, that was, that was the wrong play to make right there? Mistakes are why the game is the games are fun. If there were no mistakes, the game would be awful boring. So everybody makes mistakes. And I, I don't think it's – and everybody knows they made the mistake. And, you know, a lot of times there are ways to say it for a veteran guy. Like, he knows better. You know, that, that's a play that he knows better at this point of the game, that you shouldn't be throwing that pass up the middle. Just keep it safe, throw it up the board. That's a great way, in my opinion, to – and that's kind of the way I always looked at it. How do you say it that the player would get the point if you were talking to the player? He would get the point and not feel that, boy, you just blasted him. Dave Reed is with us, and I want to fast forward, Dave, to 1999, and it's a great season for you and certainly a really good playoff for the Dallas Stars. People in Buffalo now don't want to hear it, but the reason why I wanted you on was because there's always another side to the story, and quite often it's a, it's a story that people don't hear enough about, and, and that St. Louis Blues series. If we could start there, what was it about that series that maybe – convinced your group in 99 that you were on to something here we struggled every year the, the years previously with Edmonton in the first round and and getting getting through uh Edmonton we were in four we were on a very big high and St. Louis had uh they, they were kind of up and coming they were pushing uh but we had all sorts of confidence going into that series I, I think out of anything we had that was probably the series we had the most confidence in um, uh, just because Edmonton, we had lost two years earlier in the first round in seven, and we always battled them. Uh, and the St. Louis coming to, against St. Louis, I, I, I recall just the confidence that we had in that series and top to bottom um, with, with whether it was goaltending, power plays, five on five. Uh, we were a very tough team to play against. It was very grinded out, grinded out, grinded out. And our confidence level was extremely high. Moving on to Colorado, I've got to think, you, you talked about the confidence from Edmonton. The, the turnaround immediately after that loss to Colorado really seems to me like it would have been an, a, a, a very obvious springboard to, hey, at some point we're going to have our backs to the wall and we have them to the wall now and now we say no. And it's kind of that's what you did because you then took over the next two games in that series to move on. I still look back at that series as being one of the most incredible seven-game series uh, I ever played. And it was the conference final. And, and it was just a matter of, of, of making sure that, that, that we knew we had the talent, you know, and play that way. You know, you, you know you, you, you've seen many teams that, wow, this is a very talented team. But if they don't believe in themselves and believe in their system, that talented team isn't going to be successful. And that's where the coaching and our leadership really stepped up through that series. That was a, a both arenas were small and old. Uh, that was old McNichol Arena in, in Denver, and it was the Reunion Arena in uh, Dallas. So the arenas were small and older. They were loud. Uh, the, the the games were just back and forth and back and forth, and um, they were physical games. They were skill games uh they were nasty games in my mind i don't know if other guys thought it but it was like we slayed the dragon because the abs were you know i think everybody expected the abs to beat us it's interesting turns in the series here that you know obviously both teams at some point when you get to this stage of the playoffs you're banged up then you're going to suffer even more injuries during the series and as you go back to that final against the sabers buffalo comes into your building first You've talked about the mindset of your team, but as I've asked many of our guests to this point who've come up to the Sabres in the playoffs, what was your thought about, as you look across the red line at center, about facing that group of Buffalo players and with Dominic Hasek yeah. that you had to beat? Our mindset in that was we're facing a team that's just like us. But we also knew that the Sabres were an extremely disciplined team and played like we did. They wanted to play the outside game. They wanted to play it, chip it behind to open ice, go get it. Chip it behind the next guy, chip it below the goal line. No back passes, no risky passes to the middle. Make you come and get the puck from me. It's my puck. You've got to come and get it from me. We're not, 
they didn't give the puck away and they they back check like like you know like hounds but we felt that hey we're we're we got this we're going to win this and game 1 was a very very rude awakening for our team because we didn't we didn't we knew you know we were being told everything about the sabers but we're like you know what yeah but we just beat the ass i mean come on seriously we just beat colorado and that was the feeling i got from our group and we had a we had a swagger and a confidence and a cockiness about us and that quickly got humbled in game 1 when we lost in overtime and it was like oh boy Obviously, you've been asked this so many times, but it, you're exhausted and you've just accomplished the ultimate feat in, in that moment. Um, what did you do once that puck crossed the line and you saw Brett jumping up and down? All I can remember is the guys on the ice uh, celebrating. And when they went up, our bench went up. So it's not as though it was like a two-on-one, a slapper, and it's like, oh, you know, we're, hey, here's the anticipation of it. Because it just it, it all came off a broken play. Uh, I think it was a turnover down lower. The puck came out of the corner as normal and got just kind of dumped to the net and it was banged in about the second or third whack. So at what point did you start to hear Buffalo's side of it? I mean, you've won the cup and there's always another yeah. side, but this was a pretty sick year in the broadcast business now. So you know how significant the Sabres take on that goal was. Personally with me, I, I had no idea. And now other guys may have, a, um, I had no idea. I had a lot of family there, um, a lot of relatives in the Niagara Falls area for me and a lot of family uh, coming in from the Toronto area. I mean, it's, it was very close. So I was, you know, we, by the time we got everybody in, uh, the photos were going on. The first time that I realized that there was any, any issue whatsoever. And this is from being on the ice. And I'm, you know, people saying, oh, Lindy Ruff came out and he was yelling the celebration going on. And the, the cup's being, he's yelling. And I'm like, I don't, I don't remember seeing him. And people, oh, you must. I'm like, I don't. From where you are on the bench, the puck's in the net. Your teammates are throwing their sticks in the air and you're celebrating. You've won the Stanley Cup. And you're living the dream. Um, that's your side of the story. And then obviously the, the, the Sabres side of the story was very much in contrast to that, but it doesn't and didn't change the outcome of the moment. So uh, it's certainly not to point fingers, but it is just to find out what people were either aware yeah. of or not aware of. I would, if it were me too, I'd probably be, if I'm on the other side, I had no idea. I mean, we just won the cup. I don't know. It's three overtimes or game six. We're on the road. We can't wait to get home. All those things going through your mind. No, Dan, you know what? I, I've never, I've never actually watched, I've never watched the series. I've never watched that game. I've seen celebrations. I've seen the goal scored, yeah. but, uh, but knowing, you know, obviously knowing what's the, 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 the rules, um, it was the dumbest rule ever at the time. And, and, and looking back, I can remember everybody, you know, many goals throughout the course of the year. But there's no question over the course of the year that if, if, I, if I was on the other side, I would have done and the exact same thing as the Sabres and questioned why that goal was allowed at that time because there's X, Y, and Z goals that weren't allowed in a similar situation, and this one was. And, uh, you know, so – but again – I, I totally understand where everybody was uh, on the discussions, but I had people say I'm oblivious to a lot of things, but I had no idea in my level of oblivion uh, at that time in, uh, in 1999. Thank you so much, sir. Great talking to you. Make sure you look after yourself and your family. Yes. Thanks, Dan. Stay safe.